Hi, I'm Raymond van Barneveld and you're watching Behind the Bar with Paul Starr. Welcome Behind the Bar with Paul Starr brought to you by William Hill, the proud sponsor of the World Diets Championship. Of course, last weekend we've seen the World Cup of Darts, England victorious for the third time. I'm happy to say we can join by no other than it's ITV's Chris Mason. How are you doing, Chris? Very well, mate. You? Yeah, all, all okay. So, did you enjoy the World Cup of Darts? Yeah, at its moments. I think I think it's always tough early doors with the with the nations that we don't normally see players from, and it's a, a big shock for them getting in front of several thousand people and the razzmatazz of live television. So you have to give them a little bit of time and, and, a, and a few more chances. We might see some better performances. I thought one of the Indian guys was, was quite useful and looked looked very good. Looked like he had a good action. But yeah, I think it was good. It was exciting. Uh, the final was impressive. I think the overall average combined in the final was over 102, which is, yeah. which is quite phenomenal. Some 21 points up from all the action that took place in the first round. So yeah. Yeah, we're still a long way off having a, uh, you know, all the nations being a, a, up to a, a certain standard, but it's getting there. Yeah, I, I, I said last week on the show, I said, oh, I think, oh, you know, lots of surprises, but there wasn't really. I mean, if you look at the quarterfinals, you've got Belgium beat Australia, Scotland beat Hungary, England um, beat Germany, Northern Ireland lost to the Netherlands. Now, it's the, the sort of teams you expect to, to, to be there. And, and when you go, if I move on now to the, then to the quarter, uh, the semi-finals. In the semi-finals, apart from say uh, the Belgians, then you've got top five in the world and Barney. So it's it's what you expect, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. The, the latter stages is always reasonably predictable. I mean, the, the world pairs that I lost in the final of, which is a similar kind of concept, is pairs, but obviously it was that back then it was down to uh, your manufacturing sponsorship deals. Right. They put you together. Hence the at the time Phil was with Unicorn, uh, as was Bob Anderson, who, who beat us in the final. Uh, Eric and Dennis Priestley were with Harrows, so they played together. Uh, and over the years, that that threw up a few surprises. No, probably no more so than myself and Steve Rawl getting yeah. to the final, because that you know that was unexpected. But yeah, I think it's it's hard to see past the sort of the the top four nations, which are you know, I mean, Belgium. Belgium was a bit of a surprise because Ronnie's not been in the best of form mm. lately. Uh, but we always know Kim will will, will give a hundred percent. Uh, and more uh, yeah. when needed, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I like it. I like the I like the last day of it, I, and and I also like the first day because you know it's a lot of unknown quantities, and and that's how you, you know, we we we, we get to see the possibly the the new stars coming through or, or a shot running in the worlds where again a lot of these nations get a chance to have a representative put forward. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned uh, Kim Highbrex. <laughs> what do you mention, make of uh, Kim and? Um, Paul Nicholson, they had a bit of fun, didn't they? I mean, it's, yeah. it's Paul, isn't it? He's, love it or hate it, it's yeah, great. I, great. Paul's very, very much a Marmite character because he, he couldn't be so different away from, from the dartboard. Yeah. Um, you know, he's quiet, he keeps himself to himself. He wouldn't, literally wouldn't say boo to a goose. But unfortunately, in that game, it's, you know, it's quite a volatile. There's a lot of pride and a lot of money on the line. And if you, if you behave in a certain manner, you almost... You know, listen, my antics were out there with, with the best one, but the different ones, you know, my persona was equally as offensive off the hockey as it was on. Um, you know, and I, I could back my mouth up. Unfortunately for Paul, I don't think he could fight sleep. Um, and I, I bet the DRA are gutted that we're not both around at the same time. They'd be all off to Hawaii every weekend. Yeah, that they'd love, they'd love that with all the, all those fines. I mean, uh, look, looking at the semi final in, in the final that the, the Scotland two um, Netherlands won. I mean that that was great. And Gary Anderson was really on form there because I know on ITV uh, um, on Sky Side they were saying that oh it, it, P, Peter is the man of the tournament, player of the tournament. But looking, it's Gary Anderson who he, he beat Barney four one and in the final he won both matches four one. So Gary he, he he turned it on and he's he's the real deal now. Yeah, Gary Gary's really really. Starting to, I mean, I've known Gary for uh, 20 plus years, and he was playing that kind of darts in small little tournaments way back then, literally. And it was frightening to see he was he was phenomenal. He went through this 
you know, this spell, again, it, it's very similar to what I went through. If you can get that monkey off your back yeah. and get a win. Um, but he has, you know, he, he, he plays with almost the relaxed nature he now should. He's got nothing else to prove. You, no. know, he's a, he, you know, he's a world champion. He, you know, he's a Premier League champion. And, uh, and he can go on and win more majors, like real big majors, yeah. um, for as long as he wants. So he's not the... He's a bit of a lazy player when it comes to putting the hours in away from the TV events and the ranking events. I mean, if he wins on a Saturday, he'll be owned by half one on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's going to get floored in the first round. No, it's true. And then... Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I love Gary. I, yeah, I think he's, he's, he's one of the nicest guys in the game and one of the nicest guys, guys away from the hockey. He's, yeah. a, he's a great guy. And, you know, on a, for a personal note, to, to see someone like him eventually... You know, win win the worlds. It, it was fabulous and fabulous for the game. Great stuff. And of course, um, England they they mastered it. They got there three uh, two. I mean, Adrian, uh, you know, to be he, that last game to win four one against Peter Wright. I fancy Peter actually in that because I thought Peter was playing playing nicely. But Adrian stood up in because uh, Adrian's been a little bit hit and miss lately, hasn't he? But that was nice for Adrian. Well, to, to yeah, hit that I mean, so still he, he's finished, didn't he? Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> again. You listen to all the Sky pundits. I mean. They, they they change their minds more than I change my shirts. I mean, <laughs> That's it, not possible. It is, it is quite sad that the people who are who are paid to have an opinion and are, are, are experts um, keep writing him off. I don't understand. That. I mean, he's yeah, he is losing, but with phenomenal averages. Yeah, he is. You know, they, they people do the same with Adrian. You know, the, the power of, of social media now. You can see everybody's opinion, which is which is laughable. I mean, the guy's a multiple champion. He. Mm. he you know, and the nature of the game, you cannot be unbeatable all of the time. As, as, as good as currently Michael Van Gerwen is, you know, there is going to be the odd day where it just doesn't work for you. You miss a few doubles or your opponent plays out your skin. And, you know, Adrian and Phil, is, they get on so well up there. And there's and it, you can almost see in their environment when they're together that Adrian does believe he is the understudy. And he looks up to Phil, and he listens, and he takes his advice. Yeah. I mean, nobody knows more about winning a game of darts than Phil Taylor. Yeah, that, that's it. And you mentioned Michael Van Gerwen. And if we look ahead to the European Tour number five um, in race in Germany um, at, 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 at the weekend, um, we have Michael Van Gerwen eleven away. He's won all four European tours, but of course Taylor's not there. Lewis isn't. We don't have Anderson. So in the betting, Chizzy's around about eight to one. Peter Wright fourteen. Smith's twenty. Thornton twenty. Whitlock twenty eight to one. You know Kim Hybrick's flirt. It's crazy. Isn't it? and, and at times Whitlock looked really good. Yeah. Uh, in, in times in his matches, he looks like he's now got his darts eventually to where he likes them. Um, again, at times, you know Peter Wright looked good. Again, another one that's been fiddling. I think he's changed points and yeah. uh, and various little things. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is tough to look past Michael because of his domination. Yeah. Um, but personally, I'm sort of down the same routes as you. I'd be looking for a big outsider who's not going to meet potentially Michael to the final if Michael yeah. goes on to win it. Yeah. Um, and there's loads of tasty ones. Yeah. You know, around the 33 to one. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised for somebody to grab that initiative, go there, who hasn't been in the World Cup, so they're rested. Yeah. You know, they can have a nice build up to it. I mean, they're, they're lovely events to play, and I, I used to love playing in Europe. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's always loads of practice. Well, I mean, the PBC do do it, do it right. The, the facilities for the players are, are second to none, which is why I, I'm in the opinion you, you see a lot of these players that do make that transition across, all right? Some don't quite make the grade, but the ones that we know are quality, they will build and they, yeah. they will they will relish the opportunity, the money, the rewards, and to play in the best conditions. Yeah. So maybe a, a Terry Jenkins at 28, Whitlock um, 28, Kim Hybrex at 33 to 1. So what, a bit of a lump on Michael, 11 to 8, and then... And, and then, yeah, nice and then I'd have some small, some small e e each way bits. Kim Hybrex looks like he's playing well. Yeah. Uh, there was no... There was no aftermath. I don't know if you've seen the yeah. picture he posted yeah. of himself and, and Paul uh, having a laugh and a joke about it, which is how it should be. I yeah. mean, if that's, if that, you know, what's, what happens on stage should stay on stage. You know, yeah. that, that's just the way it is. And, um, you know, there's no point is, when, it, when it's all said and done, it's, it's, it's a game of darts. It's, the World Cup's probably not quite as important as a, 
uh, world championships in terms of prize money and prestige. But yeah, just leave it where it is, and and I'm glad they both moved on because neither of them could fight sleep. No, <laughs> that's correct. Well, that's fantastic, Chris. Well, thank you for your for your time on that, and hopefully you join us again on um, more behind the bar. I will do. Thanks a lot, Paul. Cheers, Chris. Thanks. Well, it's great to catch up there with Mace the Ace, of course, Chris Mason. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free. Like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. And join us next week on More Behind the Bar. We're trying to grab a bit more value from William Hill, the proud sponsor of the World Diets Championship. We look forward to seeing you then.